The following video illustrates using the conformance test module, both with automated test equipment and by manually setting up the required test conditions. This next demo demonstrates the conformance test module of the communication protocol test harness. The conformance test module is an optional module that automatically performs the conformance test specified by the DNP tech committee and approved by the DNP users group. This is especially useful now that the users group allows you to list the device as self-tested. What we actually recommend is that you use third-party testing every few years, every two to three years, uh, third-party test your device, and then in between with every release, self-test it to ensure that your device remains compliant. Uh, for this demo, we're going to run an excerpt of the test. We're going to run some of the binary input tests and one of the double-bit binary input tests. Uh, and with this demo, the binary input tests are connected to uh, an Omicron CMC156 to automatically generate the input uh, conditions required by the test. So this demonstrates running the test with automated test equipment. For the binary test, we don't have automated test equipment connected. To run the test, start by resetting the state in case any tests have previously been run, and then simply select Execute. The test begins, and you notice in the right-hand pane it shows the tests that are running and shows a green band as each test passes, or it would show a red band if the test failed. This is a fun test to run in person because you can hear the Omicron fire up and the relays start clicking. I'm going to let you hear a little bit of that. So what's happening is various input conditions need to be set up to run the test, and the test harness is automatically configuring those input conditions through the Omicron CMC156. So the binary input tests have completed now and we've gone to the double bit input uh, test. As I mentioned with the double bit input test we do not have this connected to a piece of automated test equipment. So since the test harness can't automatically run that test, what it does is it issues a dialog box like this, indicating the conditions that you need to set up in order to run the test. So if you don't have automated test equipment, you can still run the test. It's a little slower than if you have full automation, um, but still much easier than any other way to set up and run these tests. I'm simply going to cancel the test here, and when I do, this test is going to fail. Notice we have a red check mark here, and the double bit input change test failed. We also got an orange band warning us that the tests were canceled. And the final bar shows the result of all of the tests. And in this case, the combined test failed because the last test failed. Now if we go look at the main window of the test harness, we can look in the protocol analyzer log. And notice that it shows is each step occurring, what happens, it shows the uh, communications that occur as a result of that step, and it indicates the result of the test. At the end of your test, you can save the log. We recommend using File, Save Protocol Analyzer Log as XML. If you select this, then a little browser pops up and you have the opportunity to choose where you want to save your log file. The advantage of saving the log as an XML file is that it can be loaded back into the test harness later, and then the filters still apply um, to this loaded file so you could drill down and look at additional layers or turn them off and, and look at fewer layers.